In this video, let's understand the coagulation. The coagulation or the clot formation is the third step in hemostasis. Now, what is hemostasis? Hemostasis is a physiological stoppage of bleeding from an injured or a ruptured blood vessel. So now what are the first and the second steps in hemostasis? As soon as the blood vessel is ruptured, the first thing to happen is vasoconstriction. So that's the first step. The second step is what is called as the platelet plug formation. Now platelet plug formation is also called as a temporary hemostatic plug. The third is, as I have already told you, is the clot formation or the coagulation. Now once the clot is formed, this clot is going to shrink and that is called as the clot retraction. So the first step is vasoconstriction, the second is the platelet plate plug formation, the third is the clot formation and the fourth is the clot retraction. Now the coagulation is called as the coagulation cascade. Why do you think so it is called as coagulation cascade? Because in this the inactive enzymes are activated and the activated enzymes in turn activate inactive enzymes and this process keeps on occurring till there is formation of the clot. Now there are two pathways by which the clot is formed. One is called as the intrinsic pathway, another one is called as the extrinsic pathway. So what is it which is going to cause activation of the intrinsic pathway? The intrinsic pathway can be activated whenever there is exposure of the blood to the underlying collagen fibers. This occurs in vivo. Intrinsic pathway can also be activated in vitro. When does this occur? This occurs when there is exposure of the blood to a negatively charged wettable surface like the glass. Now when is it that extrinsic pathway is going to get activated? Extrinsic pathway is going to get activated whenever there is damage to the tissue. Let's understand each one of them. So let's start with the intrinsic pathway. So the first thing to occur is that in the intrinsic pathway, there is activation of this factor, which is called as the factor 12. This occurs in the presence of two important cofactors. One is called as calicrin. Another one is called as the high molecular weight kinogen and 12 gets activated. The activated factor is abbreviated by A. So it is now called as 12A. Now this 12A which is activated, it is going to activate the next factor in line which is the factor 11. Even this process is accelerated in the presence of high molecular weight kinogen. Now we are going to get factor 11A. Now the factor 11A which is formed is next going to activate the factor 9 and we are going to get the factor 9A. The factor 9A okay it is going to cause conversion of factor 10 into factor 10 a that is we are going to get an activated factor 10 now for this to occur we need activated factor 8 we need the presence of the phospholipids and we also need the calcium now act activation of the factor 8 is occurring when factor 8 dissociates from one more factor which is called as von willebrand factor okay it's called as a von willebrand factor Next, let's understand the extrinsic pathway here. The extrinsic pathway, as I have already told you, it is going to get activated whenever there is a tissue damage. And whenever there is a tissue damage, there is going to be release of a substance which is called as tissue thromboplastin. This is very, very important. Now, this tissue thromboplastin is going to cause activation of the factor 7. Factor 7 gets activated into factor 7A. Now, this 7A, in the presence of, again, the phospholipids and the calcium is going to cause activation of factor 10a that means both the intrinsic as well as the extrinsic pathways they are going to cause activation of this very important factor that is factor 10 now this factor 10a which is an activated factor 10 in the presence of factor 5a that is activated factor 5 and phospholipids and calcium it is going to cause conversion of prothrombin into thrombin this is a very very important step hence the factor 10a along with the factor 5a phospholipids and calcium taken together they are called as prothrombin activators now the thrombin which is formed here it again causes further activation of this prothrombin activator so it's kind of a positive feedback mechanism which is occurring here now the thrombin which is formed here it is going to cause conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin. Now the fibrinogen is first converted into the fibrin monomers. These fibrin monomers, they undergo polymerization and that results in the formation of thick fibrin strands. Remember that the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin monomers, of course, is triggered by thrombin. Even the process of polymerization is also activated because of the thrombin. Now these thick fibrin strands which are formed, they undergo stabilization by means of cross-linking. So this stabilization which occurs by means of cross-linking, it occurs in the presence 
of activated factor 13a as well as calcium and even this process is activated in the presence of thrombin so thrombin has got very important functions in the coagulation cascade now this stabilization is going to result in the formation of a stabilized fibrin meshwork the stabilized fibrin meshwork is what is called as the clot or it is also called as the definitive hemostatic plug so this is what this is what is the coagulation cascade so this is how the fibrin mesh is going to look like in this fibrin mesh are entangled our platelets as well as the rbcs and this is what is going to prevent the bleeding from the injured blood vessels so now once the clot is formed we are also supposed to mention regarding this process which is called as a clot retraction so what is a clot clot is a meshwork of fibrin which is entangled with rbcs and platelets so within minutes the clot begins to shrink and contract so this process of shrinking and contracting is what is called as clot retraction so once the clot begins to shrink what happens is it is going to express the serum out of the clot okay what is it which is causing clot retraction the clot retraction is a function of the platelets it occurs because of the contraction of the platelets the surface of the platelets throws what is called as the pseudopodia which are going to cause contraction this occurs because of the activation of the myofilaments so what is the help or what is the function of this clot retraction clot retraction helps in consolidation and strengthening of the clot it also helps in facilitating the wound healing so clot retraction is a very very important process in the coagulation cascade so what were the steps the steps were the first and foremost thing to occur is there is going to be vascular spasm or vasoconstriction in the hemostasis the second is the platelet plug formation third one is the coagulation followed by that there is clot retraction so after clot retraction there is one more very important step which occurs which is called as the thrombolysis or it is better called as fibrinolysis okay which is nothing but the lysis of the clot so here you are seeing there is an injured blood vessel and the coagulated clot is formed and here you are seeing that there is a reduction in the size or there is shrinkage of the clot this is what is called as the clot retraction thank you for listening